Welcome back, my friends and fellow gamers. I'm Wrath, and we're back for our third episode in the new season of Return to Hellion. We are in, of course, 0.5.0. These last three episodes have all been recorded on the 4th of July, so uh, if you're leaving comments, I apologize if the, your comments are not being addressed in follow-up videos, because... Of course, I am doing a lot of this in one sitting as I have the time available here on the 4th of July. Oh, too fast, too fast, too fast, too fast, too fast. Slow it down, slow it down. Down. Break down. Ooh. Very nearly made a mess of myself there. Okay. Almost needed my brown pants. Okay, slow it down. And match. Okay. So this is the last quest, which is a proper warp drive. Which is to say that it's probably going to give us the warp cell and a warp cell detonator. So that's going to be our next objective here. So the nice thing about this is that they've actually, uh, based on on my understanding of all this, this actually will allow for uh, there to be less exploits in the game. Like, you remember you could always exploit the game by uh, having yourself a... Uh, a rescue ship summoned and you'd get you know some extra supplies and one of those things was that you could exploit it for free warp cells and to an extent you can still do that but it's not going to give you all that much okay so this is pretty well wrecked in here is there any no nothing in there Nothing in here. This thing is thoroughly wrecked. And it looks like I'll have to go around the back end of this thing to get into the... the, uh... the engineering bay. Because apparently the whole engineering bay was ripped apart. Which is, honestly, this is the coolest model I've seen. And I have to say that I love it. Turn my lights on. And there is a singularity cell detonator. So now the way that they've got it worked out is that level one warp without the singularity cell detonator is a sort of emergency mode, which takes excessive amounts of time, but does not require any warp cell fuel. So that's pretty awesome. The downside, of course, is that it is forever and a day to get anywhere on emergency warp. So, it's not going to be your primary choice. Okay. The, the, singular, the, the basic singularity cell detonators now only provide you with the basic normal warp that everybody's used to prior to 0 0.5. So I always like going through the animations because it's it's more fun. Pushing the button and watching it go back in there. Sorry. I just, I mean, like, every time they put in an animation like that, I like to use it. Okay, so that has completed all of our basic quests. I'm going to go ahead and close that. So we're now free to go ahead and do whatever it is that we want. Well, what we want is to get away from this area. So I want to go back to the the orbits issue. 
this guy right here is the killer. Actually, this orbit that they gave us is actually pretty clean. Normally, you'll get an orbit that comes very close to burner at some point and is therefore extremely dangerous because you'll at some point end up with your station meeting burner and having an unfortunate accident. But in this case it looks like our orbit is clean and we won't have to actually move it. So that's actually a, a bit of a a good benefit for us here. Although I don't, you know, I mean, normally I would probably warp away from this just to get away from the stereotropes wreckage. But we are in a good enough position now that we can go ahead and I'm going to take that out. And we're going to go ahead and get ourselves into the ship and, or into the station rather, and start taking stock of what we can build now and what we can learn to build immediately. Now, as always, I recommend strongly against early acquisition of extra parts or uh, extra extra parts of your station, purely for the purpose of uh, ensuring that because you're. you're on limited resources to start off with you just don't want the added expense of having to maintain uh, other parts of your station because that that maintenance will kill you uh, and it will make it will honestly make the game a lot less fun you know if you get your if you build yourself into a corner and you can't uh, survive. Okay, first of all, first things first. Let's go ahead and flip the power a little bit here. We need the fabricator on. Do I have enough power for everything? Almost everything. Just no air, uh, air cleanser up on the ship. That will be a bit of a problem later. Alright, so first things first, let's check our blueprints. Uh, no guns, no weapons of any kind, no magazines. So we'll have to sacrifice one of the magazines that we picked up. Uh, we'll need to sacrifice one of the fire extinguishers. Okay, batteries, not hacking tools. Just the most basic of suits basic medical and basic warp cells and the nano cores and the raw containers but not the refined containers and then all of that's basically junk because I don't care about any of it okay Let's do this. We know we're going to toss that in. We're going to go ahead and pull one of these guys because we only technically need one, but then it wears down twice as fast. Oh wait, we needed the, the ammunition. And we need 
need one of these. Uh, let's get the one that's over here. later to just have all of these available to us. Now one of the things that I've been told is that uh, each of these the blueprints are character specific so like if you play with somebody else if you don't have an item to also sacrifice then your friend will know how to produce a particular object, but you won't. Okay, and then the refined container, because we do not as of yet know how to make those. All right, so that has filled in all of the knowledge that we are capable of. We should have the ability to make the mining tool, right? Yeah, okay. So we have the basics, but definitely could stand a bit more. And we need to bring in the, if we can get another singularity cell detonator, we're gonna need to, to get it in order to be able to make sure that we've got enough to move around. Okay, so what's on our list of things to do. We're, we've got our quests, but we also need to do mining. Let's check the state of our resources. Let's real quick refine that. there. Okay, so push that into the fabricator. So we got plenty of room. Don't know why it leaves that like little ghost image there. All right, so let's go ahead and burn these down. So we've got 120 of carbon. So let's take a look here. We can make another carbon filter for the ship which I think we should. That, that should definitely be on our list. And we can make another raw container, which also that and a battery. So that's 10, 65. That's probably going to be the, about the max that we're going to have room for. And that's, uh, 30. So yeah, that's going to be the max that we're going to be able to really afford at the moment. So if we do some mining, we can turn around and produce a little bit more and be able to get better results. So let's let's do that. So let's do another battery. Now we've got two of those for mining. Let's go ahead and do a, another canister. That'll give us three canisters to work with to start with here. And then, oops. 
let's do another carbon filter for the ship. That will give us sufficient equipment to be able to proceed short term. All right, and that leaves us a little bit of resources to work with. So I think that our first order of business is going to have to be mining. So let's go ahead and prep ourselves. Three raw containers. And then we need, those are all filled. Let's go ahead and fill my backpack. So I'm thinking one can of, of ice and two cans of iron, or what whatever passes for iron, in order to make our loadout. Or, I mean, I could. I could technically take the... Uh, I could take my whole station with me for the mining. That might actually work better long term because I can mine and refine and, and go back out and be able to just uh, continuously work everything. Let me go look at what the the sensor scans are showing. Yeah, I think if I can find a, an asteroid that doesn't pass through the the valley of deep shit, or you know, it doesn't go through the the, cl the debris cloud, then I will probably use that as my first choice for uh, a place to go ahead and dock up uh, or bring my bring my base for for basic mining and then we can strip mine the heck out of it now I wouldn't normally recommend this unless you were very secure with your ability to get out of there in in rapid order like if you had a team and you wanted to bring your station to an asteroid for like a, a long-term mining but let's go ahead and take a look here so as it stands I wonder if the asteroids are still out there <laughs> okay so I probably don't have the range to scan them down for one So I don't think that I want to let's see here. Yeah, because all of them pass back through that debris cloud. Uh, 
Alright, so I think what we'll do is... Oops, I started a rotation. Shut off the ship lights for a minute. What I'll do is I will go ahead first of all and install that guy. I didn't give the ship any oxygen. Dang it. Well, it doesn't actually need any because I've got... Okay, so... I'm gonna go ahead and shut down the airlock and the fabricator while I'm away. problem is I'm not going to generate a whole lot of power. So let's go ahead and pop this off here. see if we can kind of do two birds with one stone here. to that one. So now we are all set to get the heck out of here. God, I love that that new effect. That sort of inversion there is really kind of cool. Mad props for whoever whoever came up with this as the the new warp effect. Uh, it's really good. It is downright spectacular. Although I wonder what it looks like if your warp path actually goes through something. I wonder if that something would be like right in the center there. Be like, oh look, you are about to hit this thing. I just love all of the distortion effects around that central sort of uh, maelstrom eye of the storm kind of fish eye there. It is, it's like mesmerizing and creepy at the same time. I have to, I have to say that I, I'm really, really enjoying the, the overall setup of the, the changes that they've made. And I'm looking forward to discovering uh, a bunch of the changes. Oh, there we go. Got a big old asteroid. Ooh, the asteroid looks like these asteroids look like they've gotten a facelift. Let's kick on my lights here. Or maybe I'm just looking at the, the dark side of this asteroid. Mm. No, I don't think they've gotten a facelift per se. Uh, maybe they've just added some variety to the shapes. Okay. 
All right, so it is slightly rolling. Let's get to work. Now, because we're going into a an area that I don't like, we're going to go ahead and shut this off. And we're going to depressurize the whole ship. so that I can get in and out quickly. Because I can always set the ship to pressurize and go and start piloting after all is said and done. Without having it worry me too much. <laughs> That's... The shadow work is nice. I love I love all of the little details in this game. They make for for such a gratifying experience when you're playing this game and you realize that such love and attention went into all of the tiny details and this, you know, and especially since the devs are not, you know, this this developer is not a big group of people. They do not have much resources so they you know they work within their means and they have consistently you know delivered quality content uh, not just with the upgrades but like listening to to people uh, you know like the like the bulkhead that was that was one of the the modules that was a community suggestion I think like myself and somebody else we all suggested either like a uh, uh, you know a, a cap or whatever or some kind of like cupola module that we could find to you know create basically just like a window uh, or like a sitting room kind of space at the end of one of the hallways so that you couldn't so you could basically cap off parts of your station that you didn't want to have to deal with or that you didn't have an ability to cover. That that kind of thing, that the fact that they that they listened, it really speaks highly of the developer in general. Uh, but you know, it's just the, the way that they handle themselves is really, really good. I've never I've never known one of the developers to speak cross to people. Uh, I've never, you know, I mean, they, they, they're, they're very professional. They're very, they're very good with the community. Uh, and so I have to, I have to give a lot of credit to these guys because they, they work their butts off. And if you are enjoying this content and you haven't bought this game yet or, or bought into the, uh, the, the early access, I would ask you to cons really seriously consider doing so because they deserve your support uh, for having made. I mean, even even now, this game is hands down better than any game of a similar genre, which there really isn't anything like this. You know, there there are games like Space Engineers that focus on you know building. But this really isn't uh, about building. This this game is really about, you know, you're 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 effed in space, and you're not gonna fabricate a, a new base. You're gonna you're gonna basically be stuck scrounging for parts to try and keep what you have from failing. Now, I almost kind of wish that they would. Uh, that they would put in like a hardcore mode for this game like a not you know similar to like the single player but like uh, kind of like uh, the some of those zombie games that where it's like you know your death is assured it's just a question of how long can you survive under the the conditions of you know zombie apocalypse and I think I think that that is probably one of the 
if there was like a, a, a guarantee a mode like that for this game I think that that would be really really cool where it would be like okay there is X amount of mineable resources period you know there is there is X amount of general resources in the solar system and you know how long can you survive because I think I think that would probably make for such an interesting gameplay like I'm, I'm trying to remember what the name of the game is it's like a it's like a two and a half D isometric game kind of like Diablo but it's zombie apocalypse and like you're a survivor or whatever and you know when you start off the game you're you're just running around or whatever and as you go along you can kind of build your own base and stuff but like early on things like uh, some houses have security alarms because there's still power but later on in the game when when power starts failing then you know the alarms become no problem but you know like as all the basic services break down from from non-maintenance you know you have to do things like store water and stuff because you're not going to get it anywhere else uh, and it's just a matter of you know how many days you're able to actually survive uh, I, God, I wish I remembered what the name of that game was because it was it, it's such a cool game by itself and I probably want to pick it up just so I can have it in my library especially with the summer sale on uh, but I definitely want to get uh, a few more games during this summer sale while I still have the time and uh, for those of you who are enjoying this I've I've been considering whether or not I want to get a uh, a patreon page to allow people who want to support my you know my games to be able to uh, you know send me send me uh, stuff to help maintain like my computers and my uh, my my game library and stuff so that I can do different kinds of quality content and stuff for the for just just to keep up with you know everything that's going on because you know obviously in in games and stuff some of these games the they they come into fad and then they're gone uh, and you know well I'm not one to usually chase a, a fad as it were I do like to to get into some of these games and be able to to play through them uh, kind of like when the new Xenonauts comes out I'm actually really looking forward to that because uh, I was a huge fan of the first one and I'm doing my community edition run through on that and they're basically redoing the game in the Unity engine so uh, it'll have actually fully 3D graphics and stuff so uh, it'll be interesting to see what the modding community can can build once the game is actually in Unity rather than the, the sprite engine that it was built in originally. So uh, I'm hoping that with with a little bit of luck I'll be able to uh, pick that up when it comes out and we'll be able to to do some stuff with that I hope that they kind of take a few cues from the community edition because for any of you who have watched my community edition playthrough of the the Xenonauts game which is uh, an XCOM based game uh, based on the old original XCOM UFO defense from way back in the 80s uh, it's it's got the same level of brutality like I think I've lost like maybe like one person for every two days of the first month like every mission I lose one to two people guaranteed 
and it's it's supremely frustrating. It's not like you know you you it's kind of like when you play like the the more modern XCOM games you get you know you get invested in your troops because those are those are your squad of ultimate badasses and and nobody ever dies on your missions unless you're you know it, you know even even if you're not like freaking uh you know using save scumming to to protect your your teams you know you're you're constantly able to waltz through missions and your guys might get injured or whatever but you're you're almost never having to have a, a real major army like uh you know you go in and uh i think in the in the original XCOM or whatever if you get over like 12 soldiers or something at any given time you're you're basically like overdoing it because you can you can manage those squads you know if if you hit like 16 you're like you know it's kind of like wow you're you're kind of wasting resources but in uh in Xenonauts especially the community edition like I literally have lost an entire squad of of people's worth of troops over the course of just the er, the first month of battle you know fighting fighting the aliens that first month you know losing just a you know a score of people uh, I think I, I I think I've got like a 33% uh, attrition rate which is mind numbing I mean it's it's literally demoralizing to to sit there and have uh, my characters just obliterated which is why I haven't bothered naming any of them because it's like you know why would you bother they're all gonna die Anyway, we've gone ahead and finished up the mining. I'm going to go ahead and take the ship back to my station uh, off camera and do the refining. But until next time, I hope that you have enjoyed. And we will go ahead and progress forward with missions and getting everything squared away after, we, after I get this all done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and queue all of these various recordings up so that they'll all drop uh, about a day apart so that I have some some breathing room but I'm gonna try and get back into a more regular recording schedule and I hope that you have been enjoying uh, I hope that you continue to enjoy the new season of Return to Hellion and until next time I'll catch you on the flip side <laughs>